Alright guys, such a here again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. And as four teams are currently 0-2 going into the second week of CDL matches this weekend, Temp of the Houston Spartans, not of course currently in the league, has given quite some thought on some of these rosters. Seemingly targeting Los Angeles Gullers mostly are not even fit to be in the league. It turned out on the Sunday though, they did rather well against the reigning world champions. But is Temp correct? Should other players be given a chance? Is it just a friendship or camaraderie league as Temp seems to imply? Very much untrue to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. A few things to mention first of all. Feel free to tune into this this evening. The Varsity Esports and STEM League based out of North Carolina really on the you know, I love the collegiate stuff in esports. It's just so cool. There's a $12,000 prize pool here they're putting on. So between basically today and the 15th that's um, what's happening here. So MW3 State Championship Tournament. I think this is online but in future hopefully they can do lands. But um, I just love to see stuff like this. I know Dereal is going to be appearing on the stream. I think they've got Parasite as well coming on possibly on the Tuesday. So that's really cool stuff. The $12,000 Modern Warfare 3 State Championship coming up soon on that front. Also last night, I know that lots of people really enjoyed the crossover. I think it was nice to see this because Look, without the whole CDL, YouTube, Twitch, VOD drama, this probably never happens. But the Flank and the Breakdown came together. They did a joint show yesterday, and this is an epic show. There were just great funny moments such as this where Ben put out the red card for Sea Disguise, of course, that we talked about in last night's video. But it was a great show. It kind of reminded me a little bit as well of the Cold War Flank days, you know. It was just Zoom, it was just Ben. And look, I, I do enjoy Paddy P. Gogoda's rants, and it is is what it is but I also do very much enjoy the kind of more old school style shows where there's not they're not necessarily just flaming each other the whole time they're just having a good chat about Call of Duty and um, I think Ben really shines on these type of shows so yeah it was great vibes between them all they did obviously they discussed the matches now they can't show VOD I'm pretty sure what Skump probably said is that the breakdown going forwards will probably have to be a YouTube only stream and what they'll probably do with the flank is it'll go back to being I think Zoom really wants to do that on Twitch. He might do it on YouTube and maybe they'll find, maybe he'll decide to do that. But the this is the frustrating thing, I guess, is that YouTube, by signing this CDL deal, they've kind of, they haven't forced the hand, but in some sense, they've almost got the exclusivity of Zuma and Scump to YouTube without having to pay for it. Now, they, of course, don't actually have exclusivity, but you know what I mean, because Scump's probably going to be moving his show to YouTube because... The breakdown, the whole point is that they look at moments, they break things down, you know how it goes. And they can't do that with VOD on Twitch, apparently, even though I'm still not sure what the rules are. Like, what is the grace period? How how long from now are they able to view the matches? Can they do it ever? Because, you know, for regular sports, good luck. If you bring anything up on stream, you're going to get DMCA. So Scump's probably going to move the breakdown to do it on YouTube. I'm guessing Zuma still wants the flank to be on Twitch and probably will just step away from showing the gameplay in the background. The show can still definitely work. I think shows like this are absolutely fantastic. So hoping to see more. I don't know, maybe they could do it once every couple of weeks or once every week. I don't know, do like a flank down, I think is what people were calling it last night, which is pretty cool stuff. There was also this talking point yesterday on the current GAs. There was people noticing it yesterday. I think it was in the Search and Destroy vivid through a trophy but so did his teammates now the current ruling is you're only allowed to throw two trophies per round in search and destroy but apparently like the entire team puts trophies on but yet only two can use the trophies. That's the GA, and that's the gentleman's agreement. This is never going to be enforced by the league because that's not how it works. So, and I think what they might used to do is, well, they'd have two players run dead silence, two players run trophies, so you could only maximally have two per round. But now they're thinking, well, let's all run trophies and just say, oh, I'm going to throw one, I'm going to throw one, and I'm not type thing. But that potentially creates issues where what if you accidentally throw an additional one or intentionally and oh I'm sorry about it throw an additional one and um, that's breaking the GA. So I don't know this seems to be a bit of a controversial issue. We talked about the snaking GA broken yesterday. I don't think it's going to be too long until we see talks about potentially trophy system number of them GA getting broken. 
tactical sprints or single tap sprints, GA being broken. You know, there will be more to come on these topics as long as they try. The breakdown also, well, the flank down, whatever, put together their team of the week. I really like this team of the week, actually. I think that it's interesting for Hydra because he didn't necessarily have a great week for Hydra standards. He had some crazy maps in there, and I still think he was really impactful. Skies was mega in the second series, but, you know, people were saying, could the Skies really be on there because he did kind of snake that P1 pretty hard. Simpanelli, absolute no-brainer. I think that you probably have to lean the way of teams that played two matches as well. I'd almost be tempted to, you know, put Shotzi on here as well. I might go like Simp, Shotzi, Illy, Skies. Because Skies did play really well to be found. I want to pick someone from Subliners because they did go 2-0. and But, um, you know, and Sib wasn't great the second series. So I think Skies is justified. I might go Shotzi though because I actually think he was pretty good in their first series and was really good in the second series. But Simp to me was basically undisputed MVP of the week so far. Illy was right up there as well. His first series was crazy. But both series from Simp were very impressive. Drops the first 40 bomb of the season. Sim actually had, well, he was only 10, one of only 10 players had a 40 bomb last year, and uh, he becomes the first player to record one this year, and it's, as a bullet says, probably not going to be the last. However, there was a lot of talking points, this is the league table so far in the qualifiers, on some of these players or teams not being especially impressive, and this was the point that Donny Temp was getting across. Temp possibly this year could have been on Vegas, could have been on some other teams, we're not quite sure whether he turned down an offer, or whether he just decided decided to, what well, maybe he didn't get offers, or whether he just decided to step away, playing challenges on the Houston Spartans as he's playing on at the moment, trying to buy this time and get a spot back in the league somewhere when some of these teams make changes. And I talked before the season, you know, maybe Boston, but especially Thieves maybe, or Subliners, or maybe Gorillas, or, you know, a team like that might look for alternatives. Boston as well, possibly. I mean, there's a few teams that you can picture making changes in the relatively near future if it simply isn't working out for them. So, so Donnie Tim gives his thoughts on especially Los Angeles Grillers. That seems to be where he was going with this tweet, given the fact that he tweeted this during the series that Toronto played against LAG. Now, in that series, LAG didn't look great. They did win the search and destroy, but they didn't look great in the respawns. Toronto very much had their number. And let's be honest, the coaches poll had LAG almost unanimously as the 12th best team. Like um, the coaches had, I think they had 20 points across the 12 coaches. So basically everyone had them 12th or 11th in the power rankings which is maybe not a massive surprise. So during their first series, as they were losing, Temp tweeted this out. These guys are getting paid big boy bucks, which is... Well, I don't know how much LNG are getting paid, but you know, okay, they're getting paid the league minimum salary at the very least. Or maybe he's talking about someone else. And can't shoot their gun or get a goddamn kill. Talent is better than camaraderie, or camaraderie is, is better than talent. Or more important, I say, than talent. You obviously need both. So it's a bit of a, not exactly a cryptic tweet, but I think he's quite clearly calling out some of the teams here for the talent not being up to scratch. And maybe saying that, that camaraderie is more important for some of these teams than actually having good talent on the roster. So, um, you know, Chicken Burger, of course, our boy, comes out in the replies and says, you won two series in Vanguard. I teamed with a hacker, he says, which is pretty funny, of course, when Jimbo was on the team. And we don't think Jimbo was probably hacking in those specific matches, but maybe, you know, people could say, well, Teb, like, you literally teamed with a hacker. You should have won some more series than you actually did. Pretty funny from Doug as well. So Doug replies and says, it's first match versus Toronto. Give it time. And uh, Teb says, well, why are you assuming I'm talking about LNG? What are you trying to say? Douglas and Doug's like no don't hit me with this Don because um I think it was quite clear what Temp was referring to but Temp was I think just having a bit of a joke here really with Doug after he made that assumption but it was you know who else could it have been about he tweeted this during the series that LA Grillers were playing and it wasn't looking particularly good and at that time not many other series were really even going down however LAG they then bounced back on the Sunday they probably should have won this series against the New York Subliners. Game one, they trolled and Sky said a bit of snaking. Game two, probably should have won as well. Kismet fell off the map round 11. They couldn't convert. And as Octane says, LAG up 4-0 because they won the you know the third and fourth maps as well. And Doug's like, look, Challenger players are cooking, but uh, uh, still it's early days. And even the Toronto social media team throwing the dagger and saying that it's never too late to go back to their original intended roster that maybe was never originally intended with Diamond Con Gunners, a seaman Crimp. So, um, you know, they kept Dimacon, of course. They've now got Assault, Estriel, Flames is on the bench, and then Fame rounds out their starting roster. But they did very well against the subliners. So um, I think that Temp's statement was probably made, not, I wouldn't say rashly exactly, but I think that 
you've got to give these teams a little bit of time. Just because they didn't look great in the first series doesn't mean they can't be good. And we've seen before, especially the early parts of seasons, when kind of teams that have good chemistry tend to play pretty well, even if they don't necessarily have the best talent. The issue is that if that's the case, as the season goes forward, these teams tend to kind of start getting slammed. So I think now's maybe the chance for Gorillas to do something. And if they can't do it now, I'm not sure that they ever will, to be honest. So Temp is probably saying, get me in, you know what I mean? Like, what's going on? These guys aren't actually any good. The annoying thing about Gorillas is that they've actually done quite well so far. Yes, they're 0-2, but they've shown good promise. They haven't tweeted anything. Their last tweet was December the 8th where they welcomed their summon flames. So this is what I don't get about Gorillas. And this is what, um, of course, we have uh, Donny saying are getting paid the big bucks. They have four players. They have a substitute. They have a coach, an analyst, like a couple of guys working behind the scenes. And they have no social media person. Like, I simply just don't understand what Los Angeles Gorillas are even doing. So um, Timp is obviously kind of roasted these guys. I don't know whether it's just LA Gorillas. I don't know if it's other teams as well. And there's probably a good few players that Temp thinks he potentially should be replacing. I'm sure that he's looking at teams like Vegas and Gorillas and, you know, maybe Carolina for Golorex or something like that. Or even maybe he's looking at Subliners with Sib or Thieves with Cami or something like that and thinking get me in there instead and I'll do a better job for those boys and they're currently delivering and saying that camaraderie is key and friendship is key and all this type of stuff, which it is. And, you know, I don't really have too many issues with it. We talk about the Friendship League, but it exists for a reason, you know. Like, Los Angeles Grillers would prefer to team with guys that know each other, know how they play, and potentially have upside together and can get the best out of each other rather than put together a, you know, mix of players that don't have history, don't know what each other like to do, don't have chemistry with the coaching staff, and just might have more talent talent on paper but doesn't work as a team so you know I think the whole friendship league thing sometimes is a bit overblown like it has its place for an understandable reason and I think friendship teams can make it a decent step the issue tends to be that really you want to make your teammates your friends rather than the other way around and I don't think you're ever going to create a really winning roster unless you just kind of stack talent and then work out the friendship later just one final thing to roast the CDL on which is uh, always a good time Modern Warfare 3 thank Thankfully, it's pretty cool actually, they've got a message of the day in the game advertising the opening weekend, talking about the matches, the season starts, now get involved. This is stuff, they should be doing this all the time. It always annoys me when there's a Counter-Strike major on or whatever, or even just a tournament, and I'm loading up Counter-Strike and I'm getting the, you know, I'm, I'm watching it in the game. There's like a client box, it tells me what's going on, I can do pickems on the major in the game, I can see all the pro matches, I can watch the demos, I can catch up with everything and all this stuff. And I'm like, we never get any of this in cards, like why not, right? But sometimes they do it. The funny thing is, when they do it they've got the times wrong so this is it's always starting at 3 p.m eastern and also it's not on twitch anymore so people would probably like it's just annoying right the people would probably have seen this and think oh sick all right let me go to twitch slash call a gt oh it's not live i guess they you know i, I guess that never happened right and they won't even bother to check out the youtube so come on right if it is going to be youtube only at least advertise that it's youtube only otherwise there's people that want to find the scene and they and they just you know they go to the wrong place and they can't but i guess it's better than nothing at the end of the day so if you're very much interested in your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time